All right, so in this video, uh, I'm going to go over the method of sections by an example problem here. And uh, um, in this method of sections problem, I have a truss here, this roof truss that's it's very large. It's quite a, got a, quite a few members. It's uh, every bay of this truss has about five feet of spacing. And, uh, um, and so it's like one, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 feet long. And it's a roof truss. It's 12 feet tall all the way up to point E. And I am. I want to know in this problem. I want to know the internal forces of members D E N E and N M, which are here. D E, N E and N M here. Okay. And and the way that we're going to go about doing this, as with any method of sections problem on a truss, is to calculate the support reactions of the truss. Here, these are the three support reactions. We have this A Y, and an A X at this support and an IY here, a vertical reaction here on that roller. And then you're going to isolate and cut. And it's important to isolate and cut through three elements. The reason you have to cut through three elements is because when you take that free body diagram, you're only going to have uh, three equations available to you in 2D. So you've got, you've got, you can only cut through three elements, okay? And a lot of times people will look at a trust problem like this and are attempted to go joint by joint and that's just going to take you forever for whatever the problem is asking you, okay? Uh, unless it's asking you for every force and every member of the truss, then there's no point in doing method of joints, okay? So here we're going to do method of sections, and uh, um, and we're gonna and then once you make that cut, once we do isolate and cut here, it's like something you might do in basketball, but here you're going to isolate and cut, and then you're going to uh, apply the equilibrium equations to that free body diagram, and I'm going to. And, and that's what we're going to do right now, okay? So here, let's take this uh, uh, Let's take this right here. So let's calculate the reactions first. So let's do the first thing here. One, calculating reactions. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to apply the equations here. I've got a symmetric structure with a symmetric loading. I have a total loading of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 kips, okay? 70 kips. It's symmetric. That means each vertical reaction here takes half of it. So I have 70 kips. So this one is 35 kips, and this is 35 kips. And by some of the forces in the x direction, some of the forces in the x direction equal to 0, I know that Ax also equals 0. And again, by symmetry, I have Ay equals Iy, which equals 35 kips. Okay, so that's, that's great. Now I want to isolate and cut through the members that I'm interested in, okay? And here in this question, it's asking me for members D, E, N, E, and N, M over here. So that means I'm going to make a cut through through some members, okay? And here I'm going to cut through three, and we're always going to cut through three, okay? It's You just can't apply the free – you can't apply the equilibrium equations if you cut through more members than that. And uh, – and here we're going to apply the equilibrium equations to one side of the free body diagram, okay? And one rule of thumb to know whether or not you're making the right cut is that you should be able to take either side of the cut to analyze your structure, okay? If you can't do that, then really the cut is no good. So here I would, let's say I take the left side of this drawing here. So I'm going to take this blue line, this isolation, okay? So I'm going to isolate this, this left side of the free body diagram. I've cut it away. and and now, really, the, you know, unless you have a computer program and I can erase all this or something right here, you probably want to redraw it. And thankfully, I, I redrew this in advance here. But let's uh, – um, before we redraw it, let's make sure that we understand some of the geometry here. So I have here – we know the height is 12 feet. This member right here, okay, this member or this angle right here, this is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. Okay, that's a 5, 12, 13 triangle. And then here, this, this member DE is essentially a, uh, let's see, 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 by 12 by whatever this hypotenuse is triangle. Okay, and that's going to be important because we need these angles when we do whatever we're going to do and when we apply these equilibrium equations. All right, so... So now the thing to do is redraw the free body diagram of the cut, the isolated portion, this blue zone, okay? And, and then make sure you – and one thing that happens is that people forget the loading. Sometimes they forget the loading. They're like, well, what's going on here? Okay, make sure you have to include the loading on the, on the cut that you're interested in. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to redraw it. Okay, so thankfully I redrew it here. 
and I blew it up a little bit, okay, because, hey, my computer program lets me do it, okay? And I have here, what I want to do is from that cut, so my cut zone was here, I'm going to draw from each joint the force that would have been there in tension, okay? So this is force, oh, let me draw that, let me put that on top over here, this force DE right here, and here, I'm trying to get rid of this right here, this would be force force n m and here oops that's not force n m that's force n e and here would be force n m okay and here just to make sure we know that this line of action of the force goes through point e this line of action goes through point e here this line of action goes through point m now, the, one of the things that happens here is that when you apply the equilibrium equations, you know, everyone's tempted to go straight. You know, we're going to apply these equilibrium equations. So here it's going to be one. Uh, now you're going to apply the equilibrium equations to solve for these forces. And this is part three, really. Okay. So here, you know, people are tempted to apply some of the forces in the X equals zero because they're so familiar with it. And some of the forces in the Y equals zero. And this being the vertical here, and look, let's let's just let's just see what this does. So let's call this angle before we figure it out. Let's call this alpha. Call this angle theta. Okay, alpha and theta there. And so if I do some of the forces in the x equals zero here, okay. If I apply some of the forces in the x here, I would get like uh, uh, I would get F and M. This free body, this whole body deal. Okay, F and M plus F and E cosine of theta plus FDE cosine of alpha equals to zero. So I have a, you know, I have kind of a, a complicated equation. A lot of, you know, it, it, each variable appears here. Then I do some of the forces in Y. I get uh, F and M isn't there. So I got F and E sine of theta plus FDE cosine of alpha equals to zero. And then I have to do some of the moments about a point. And to, uh, to, to get that, you know, it, it's just, it's going to, and I'm going to have to solve, I'm going to have to go through a lot of algebra to solve for these. You know, with this right here, if you can take moments about the right point, you can get one at a time, one equation, one unknown. You can set it up with one equation, one unknown. Okay, so it, really the power here in applying the equilibrium equation is to take sum of moments. All right, so let's take, let's do the first thing. Let's take sum of moments about a point. Let's start with point, uh, let's say I want to isolate point, I want to isolate a specific force. So let's take here, I have two forces running through this line of action over here through point, point E. So if I take moments about point E, I'm going to have F and M all by itself. Some moments about point E here. Some moments about point E equal to zero. Uh, I'm, here's my point E over here. I'm going to take moments counterclockwise as positive right here. I always like to draw, write this out, the sum of moments equal to zero, and I, this direction here, it just, it's a reminder to me what I'm doing, okay? It's just a good technique to have. And here, I would have, so here, let's see, I know I have no contribution of moment about point E due to FDE because the line of action goes through point E. Same thing with FNE. All I have is FNM, and the perpendicular distance to that point, or the shortest distance, is 12 feet, okay? Then I have, in addition to that, about point E, I have plus 10 kips, which is a distance. These are all 5 feet, 5 feet, 5 feet, and 5 feet here, plus 10 kips times 5 feet, okay, plus 10 more kips times 10 feet, plus 10 kips times 15 feet, minus AY, which is 35 kips, times 5, 10, 15, 20 feet, all equal to zero, okay? And so here, great, I have one equation, one unknown, and I, and I work out the algebra, and do, 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 the uh, F and M equals 33.33 kips, okay? 33.33 kips. I got a positive result here, this 33 point kips. That implies that this FNE is in the correct direction, which FNM is in the correct direction, which means that this 
remember nm is in tension okay so this sometimes you write this as 33.3k and then you'll just write the letter t to indicate tension okay now and now we can have we can take moments about two other locations to um, calculate those forces directly and another one is i look so now i'm interested in ne if i look at nm i have a line of action that goes like this and DE goes like this, and where it intersects, I find is point A here. This point A. So now I'm going to take moments about point A. Okay. So let's uh, let's take moments about point A. Let me move down. Whoa. Okay. Let's, I'm going all over the place right here. So if I take moments about point A, right here, some moments about point A equal to zero. I have this is positive right here. Uh, let's see. So for moments about point A, I've got. Uh, let's see. I have F. N E, okay, and really, if I if I break up F and E right here, so let me use let me use black here, or uh, let me use orange right here. F and E would be broken up into a horizontal and a vertical component, okay, a horizontal and vertical component right here. This this component right here, this component is the only one that causes a moment about point A, so this would be F and E sine of this angle theta times the arm which is 5 10 15 15 feet okay 15 feet then and, and everything so that causes a positive moment about point a and then plus oops not plus if i want to look at the loading here i have everything else the loading minus 10 kips times 15 feet minus 10 kips times 10 feet minus 10 kips times 5 feet equals 0. And I can't include Ay anymore because Ay, again, goes through point A. And so here, and, and sine theta is really just sine theta. This triangle, if you recall, this was a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So sine theta is just equal to 12 divided by 13. And if I plug that into there, I'm going to get FNE is equal to a 21.67 kips. This is going to be positive, indicating tension. Okay. And now for, for the last one, okay, I, I have to find the force in DE right here. I got to find this FDE going on right here. And, uh, um, and to do that, you know, I look at, again, where, where does FNE and FNM, these two members, coincide? And they coincide at point N. So I'll just take moments about point N. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the screen so you can see a little bit better. Okay. So here, and, and I have, I will maybe write over here, I'll take moments about point N. Okay. About point N equal to zero. And I'll say here, this is positive right here. And again, I will have, again, if I break up this DE, I'll have a, a horizontal component and a vertical component of DE. And the only component that induces a moment about point N is this component right here. So I will have minus FDE cosine of alpha times the distance here. Okay, the distance here. This distance here and by similar triangles I know that this height is nine feet okay so I would compare really to, to determine this height so let's say this is this Y here so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you similar triangles real fast I've got here this is 5 10 15 so I've got Y divided by 15 feet is equal to 12 feet divided by uh, 5 10 15 20 feet okay and if I solve for this right here, just by ratios here, y equals 15 over 20, which is 3 fourths of 12, which is uh, 3, 9 feet. Okay, so y equals 9 feet. And that's how I know that's 9 feet here. So this distance is 9 feet. So cosine alpha times 9 feet. Uh, and here I have plus, so at point n here, this 10 kips does nothing in terms of inducing moment, plus I have 10 kips loading times 5 feet plus 10 kips times 15 feet and then I have the AY inducing a negative moment minus 35 kips times 
20 feet. Is that right? 20 feet? No. 5, 10, 15, should be 15 feet. 15 feet equals to zero. All right, and, and now this uh, now that I'm, I'm pretty happy with my equilibrium equation here, just I just got to figure out what this cosine alpha is. And, and here, just to, let's see, clarify again here, this, this point right here is, you know, this, this angle right here, this angle alpha is the same as this angle right here, okay? And so really, uh, I can, there's, I have a number of ways, right? I can find the hypotenuse, calculate cosine alpha from this, you know, just using the ratio of triangles. Or I, I just calculate this angle alpha, and and really what I find is that in a in this triangle that is 20, uh, 20 by 12. This is from you know 20 squared. This 20 squared plus 12 squared square root. That number is just 23.32. And, and that makes cosine alpha right here alpha. You know, if this is 23.32, cosine alpha is 20 divided by 23.32. So all I've got to do put in here is 20 divided by 23.32. Solve for FDE, okay? So solve for FDE, which is, I'm going to get a negative result, negative 48.58 kips, which is 48.58 kips in compression so element de is in compression okay and so here these one two and three are my final results okay i hope that was helpful let me know if you have any questions like the video if you like it subscribe you know do your thing good luck good luck